Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So if you follow the YouTube channel, April 24th, the last Sunday ride of the even month April, um, I mixed it up a little. It wasn't just a regular rally scooter ride. I did the scavenger hunt. And I want to show you how I did it and also the results and some of the fun photos that came back. So let's get right to it. It's kind of a little bit of a boring video. It's not like one of my hands-on videos where I'm fixing a cool bike, but I thought it's worth sharing. I certainly had a good time, and I think the few teams that joined really had a good time as well. So, so you can see on my screen, I got a couple things open. This is the scavenger hunt list that I, you know, obviously I didn't have the red answers. Those are the answers to some of the scavenger hunt questions. And I pretty much just gave four pages. I came up with this. A lot of it was the day before the scavenger hunt. I went out and huh, found a bus in somebody's driveway and hoped it was there the next morning and people had to find it, for instance. Um, I had a lot of fun writing this up. It was a lot more work than I would have ever imagined. You know, I know a lot of stuff. I'm pretty, I've been in San Diego, ridden around San Diego for like 20 years on scooters, no problem. So I know this whole corridor of area that I was, um, you know, did the um, ride in. You know, this is San Diego right here. So you got downtown San Diego and the little town of La Mesa. And that's as far as I went. So it's a little corridor here between the 8 Freeway, 94, all the way to La Mesa was my furthest east border. So pretty much let everybody lose with the questions for the scavenger hunt or the treasure hunt, whatever you want to call it, um, and gave them three hours. And the results all came by back via text. I want to protect people's privacy, but I have a text interface on my computer, so I was able to see uh, photos come in. Uh, but I'll show you the photos. I saved the photos on the side. So, so we pretty much had a little over 20 people that came in and joined. It ended up being one, two, three, four, five, six teams, you know, pretty much uh, two to four people. I had uh, three individuals. So I had Andy, Team Andy. He has a buddy uh, 150, I think. I had uh, two from Los Angeles that were down for the, the south of border lobster run. And they just had a couple minutes to do... Uh, eight points with a treasure hunt. You can see they're uh, dead last, but they did partake. They did one thing, and I'll show you those photos a little bit later. So the way this spreadsheet works is all in Excel, and it's pretty intimidating because I made this super wide. You can never print this thing because it has all the points I tallied up, and it pretty much sums up all these points. And I definitely didn't expect anybody to get them all in the three hours. You can see some of these uh, points that were in La Mesa were rarely filled in, but there's one team that got all the way to La Mesa and almost filled them all in. So, and there's bonus points too. So a lot of the teams got some bonus points and I'll go over some of those. So, so kind of uh, organize it closest to the shop. We have the Presidio Park um, in Mission Hills, which are very close to the, our Vespa shop here in San Diego and the furthest point being La Mesa, the city of La Mesa. First city, that's east of San Diego, a little suburb. Um, so we had several uh, players here. The maximum number of points you can accumulate was 327. Of course, no one got them all. We got the four gals. Uh, their nickname's the Silver Beavers. They were the winners at uh, 218 points. We got the mixtures, which is... Um, uh, two longtime customers along with two other tagalongs that helped them along the way. Team Ito, 101, and Team Three Wheelers. I just named them Team Three Wheelers because it was an MP3 500 and a Yamaha Riva with a sidecar. Uh, not too many points there. They only partake for the first uh, couple areas. We got Andy. He did really good for just being solo. He said he hardly used his phone for navigation, just kind of found the locations. And uh, we had a couple that came in, both on, um, when I, uh, I think they were both on vintage Vespas, a P200E, called them the late losers. And they actually caught up really well for showing up almost an hour late. 
Um, pretty incredible. You can see they didn't get this section, but they started nailing points on the later section. So pretty impressive. Um, so let me go over some of the fun photos. Uh, let's see if we can find my photos right here. So I saved several of the scavenger hunt photos and I kind of know the photos are fun to do. So let's do the mixture. So several photos that are pretty, um, pretty cool. You know, here's one finding the bonus bonus question of random walking bridges in San Diego. So you had to find two walking bridges. Uh, several of the teams got the bridges. So that was, that was really cool. Um, my computer can speed up a little bit. Here's another walking bridge. San Diego has got some pretty cool bridges. Uh, I was hoping people would make it to the stairways in La Mesa. Those are pretty incredible. Uh, a whole set of stairways in the hilly areas of La Mesa. Um, I personally know them very well because I uh, run and jog that area. So I hit up those stairs, get my little fitness loop in. Um, some of the one notable one here is the Hillcrest Brunch. I set the Hillcrest Brunch at 15 points. Many of the questions I had were, you know, five points, three points for some of the bonus ones. Uh, but some of the big ones were 15 points. And the Hillcrest Brunch, I knew it was gonna be very hard. There's a whole corridor on Fifth Avenue of really good brunch restaurants in Hillcrest. Uh, you got Snooze, which is this restaurant here. You have uh, Hash House A Go Go, um, several other ones I had on the questions. Um, if actually, some of them have their roots in San Diego, and now they're chains. You know, the original Hash House A Go Go is on Fifth Avenue in San Diego. Uh, they, the problem with these uh, restaurants during brunch time, I'm talking 11 a.m. on Sunday, you're going to be waiting a long line to get into these restaurants. So I was kind of taken back when I saw this photo. I was like, oh. I didn't say the whole team had to have brunch, but Barbara clearly had brunch. And here's the little tip I didn't catch until after I tally up the points. Look at her hand, there's money. There's a 20 in there. She bypassed the line, uh, chased down a server and found somebody who was getting served food, just was recently served food. That's somebody else's uh, phone and wallet on the table. Not hers, because she's holding her phone. And she pretty much just snuck in a restaurant, sat at somebody else's table and slipped him a 20 and got the photo. And I gave her the 15 points. And I could not believe it because the Silver Beavers got all the questions in Hillcrest, or all, all of them except for the brunch. And I said, like, well, that's a big 15 point. But I knew anybody that was going to do the brunch stop, you're going to be wasting a whole hour out of those three hours. Very valuable time when you can get several other points. So I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Um, you know, several other ones, you know, I said, oh, find a Tesla car supercharger. And if you know California, there's lots of electric cars here, um, I guess, compared to other areas. But, okay, so they kind of got, there's one charging, but there's people that have them beat because I asked additional questions about supercharging. Let's see if they have any other notable ones. They were one of the, one of the few that got the penny in Old Town San Diego, a very touristy area where you get the little uh, penny that you roll right out, very fun. Um, you know, here's our old shop. I'll show you that. So let's move on to another team and show some other cool stuff here. Let's see, uh, pictures, uh, oh boy. Got uh, lots of shop photos there. I'll keep this open. Um, let's go for Andy. I was really impressed because he was on his own. He had his buddy scooter. I made sure there's no cheating because you could find these murals on Google Street View. You can count the pepperonis. I specifically said count the pepperonis from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I think it was 14. And, or take a photo with your scooter out front. So he obviously got the points by doing that. that. This is on Adams Avenue. This is the very original location of uh, Vespa Motorsport in 1992. It's now a pizza joint right next to a uh, ice cream shop. And I'll maybe come up with some other photos. Some other far ones, I think this was a, a higher point one, find this cow at City Farm. Um, it's 
kind of outside the boundary of the normal corridor. I was running a lot of the questions, but there's a cow in the city and he found that. That was pretty in incredible. Um, I almost think he was one of the first ones that reported the DMV test. So state of California, you do the DMV uh, skills test on this little course. You got to keep your tires within this arc here and you know, they do this silly little skill test. It's really hard to do on a very big bike. A little buddy is like super clutch for doing this. Unfortunately, there's a farmer's market going on on Sunday. I didn't see that on Friday. The DMV parking lot was completely empty. So everybody was using this as a parking lot. I'm like, oh, but he got the photo. If you were solo, you're allowed to just take a photo of your scooter in the center. Um, I didn't ask of you to ride it. But if you were a group, I add, added a little challenge to that question. But very fun stuff. Lots of photos there. So let's go on to um, show the next, um, not used to this big thing. So let's go to the late losers. So they started pretty late. Here's a pretty cool one that no one else got. This is the original service department on the second location of Vespa Motorsport and the Super Shop. I'll show you the, the, what the building is a little bit later in the photos. But uh, they, they kind of been into scooters for a long time, so they knew exactly where it was. Uh, I asked her to find the Cobbett door at, and gave the location, but no one was going down the alley to find this tiny little entrance. This was the service entrance. Uh, if you were, I don't know how tall that thing is, like 6'4". If you're really tall, you'd be ducking your head. It was uh, pretty funny, I, I thought. Um, and here is what the 2525 University Scooter Shop is. Hmm, what's going on in the window here? Hmm. So they got the photo in front of the old location of one of the scooter shops. Um, made a cafe stop, got the bonus points there. I don't know if she even bought a drink. Probably uh, asked somebody for their empty cup. Even this gal's holding an empty cup, but kind of fun. Got the points, that's all that mattered. You didn't need to sit down and drink a, um, a, a coffee or whatever, which was the, what I asked of it. Uh, here's a fun one. There's a, a, a place that has shows and dinners with uh, transvestite uh, actors. And they have this like little lip out in the front that you could sit in. Um, pretty interesting. A couple people got that one. Uh, they were the only people that got as far east of La Mesa. They made it top of Mount Helix. You can see this is a pretty high area of um, eastern San Diego area where you're up on a hill. It's not like a mountain. I don't know. It's like 600, 700 feet up from sea level, which is the rest of San Diego. Um, and let's see, what else did they get? Let me go on to the next set of points here. So back. Um, all right, let me show you the silver beavers, which were dominated um, this test. So not only are they able to get uh, Tesla charging, they got to talk to the person, say, hey, I need to take a photo of, uh, let's see, somebody's uh, nickname for the car is Don't Trip, pretty funny. And it's charging. It's almost all the way charged, it looks like. I kind of kind of thought that was funny. So you got to uh, talk to somebody <laughs> and get into the car and take a picture of the screen proving that it's charging. That was kind of an interesting one. Um, this was pretty funny up in Presidio Park, the very odd drinking fountain. And to prove that you were there, put your helmet in this little uh, fireplace chimney look to it. I thought that was kind of interesting. I've never noticed that before. Um, here's one that's kind of fun. This is the award. I made three awards. Um, they were vintage pistons from uh, 125s or 150s. So these are original Piaggio pistons, but they are just pretty obscure and they were kind of had a lot of shelf rash on them. So I had several little awards I made for the first, second, and third place, along with lots of cool swag that we gave away too as well. Um, got the cow. That's a good one there with uh, the cow. Uh, bonus scooter. We got the bridges just like several other people. Most people got those same bridges because I kind of gave the clue for that. 
You got, this one's an old Ford dealership from the 40s. I uh, didn't give the location, but if you can find it in Mission Hills and take a photo of it, kind of a cool old building. Um, several signs around the city, the Marston, Marston House, you had to find a park bench, had to find the Rose Garden, several people got those clues. And this was, I think they were the only ones that found the muffler guy on El Cajon Boulevard. A uh, little hint is right next to a uh, little Saigon is the area. A lot of Asian restaurants, uh, Vietnamese restaurants, including there's the bonus mural. That was pretty cool. Find you get a little bonus for the, that. They found a school bus on uh, Mountain um, View Drive, and I also asked for the total mileage or the how many minutes it took you to get around Mountain View. It's a very curvy residential street. Kind of fun to uh, take a bicycle or a scooter on. I've always Enjoy doing that. Mission Hills Nursery, the oldest nursery in San Diego since 1910. Uh, started by Kate Sessions. Uh, she's the one that's responsible for decorating much of, um, of Balboa Park in San Diego back before the uh, World Fair that was here in uh, the teens. So they have a lot of fun photos. Let's move on to the last one, get this over with. Um, Let's see, so Team Edo, uh, they got the flags. And a lot of people do not know what this flag is. Kumue Nation, you got United States, Spain, and Mexico. And that's at the Presidio Park Mission, one of the oldest uh, buildings here in San Diego. Those flags are flowing. Uh, the Ford dealer, uh, Mission Hills. Um, ironically, the reason I picked this corner, I know this corner very well. Uh, before I worked at the Vespa shop, this was my prior uh, boss's uh, house up in Mission Hill, a really nice house. And around the corner, he owned another house that was an office, and it was like a wonderful office to work out of. Across here, no one, I think only one person got the question of what was in this building, a place called Ron Kiefer's Market and Espresso Mio. And I used to walk across all the time to get cafe, you know, Several coffees throughout the day, spending all my hard-earned money at the coffee shop on pastries, coffees, talking to whoever worked there several times a day. Um, but it's just kind of part of my history before I worked at a scooter shop. That was kind of fun to put something in. Uh, several areas, you know, you can see they got several. And there's they got the penny uh, regulations of a park. Um, here's a full picture of that poster. So you got the pizza. Uh, Mariposta Ice Cream is the actual building on the side over here on the front face of that building is the uh, ice cream shop that was originally the Vespa shop in 1992 for Vespa Motorsport. Got to prove you find this plaque, put your helmet on it. I don't want just a photo of the plaque. Put your scooter in front of the San Diego mural. That used to be a very cool mural that we had commissioned. Um, it was our Motorsport Scooters Racer Guy with a lot of mod targets flying out the back, but it's been since covered up. But we still kind of own that uh, area. Look at how many stickers are on the telephone pole right next to it. So I asked people to add additional stickers and sticker bomb. Uh, North Park Water Tower, several people got that. I've got the scooter in there, that was important. And I specifically asked that. You wouldn't get the points if you didn't have your scooter in it. All right, so let's move on to, uh, let's see. I got Team LA. So they only got a couple points. Uh, they were on their way back to LA, but they both stopped by, took a picture of the mural, and they got their bonus points for the sticker bombing, and of course, where they put it. Right next to this Raised in LA sticker that I happened to see on, um, on that post. There's a San Diego sticker on there too. Um, so they got their stickers, they got their eight points. And I, and I know it would have been difficult for, um, for um, them to complete all the, um, the points, you know, not knowing San Diego, because this is, you know, very much knowing locations. They, uh, Team Three Wheelers only did a couple of them, got the Presidio location. Um, they got to the bridge that's uh, just past the Marston House. This is a bridge that goes over 163. Took a photo from there, so gave them those points. Uh, got the flags, the drinking fountain, and such. 
And I think we went over all the, the mixtures. Any other fun ones? Oh, here, here's the last one. So the Silver Beavers, they were almost out of time. At, I think it was 3 p.m. And I said, hey, uh, I was sending a text out to everybody, like, uh, last five minutes, I'm not going to count points, and uh, report back to the shop. Actually, it was 1 p.m. Uh, the last 15-point question was, if you can get a lunch break in at some of Robot's favorite restaurants out east. And they were able to do that. Uh, let's see if I have the photos. Maybe I did not capture the photos, but they made it out to a, um, a barbecue joint, a West Texas um, a barbecue joint out east. And uh, they sent me a receipt of their food. And I was like, uh, not really, you know. I said, I need to see food. And they said, well, the restaurant said 20 minute wait. Well, they came out with the sides, right, you know, like two minutes before the end of the competition when I ended counting points. So I said, okay, you spent $60 on food and you came out with the sides. So you're sitting at a table with some food, gave them the 15 points. Uh, only one of the stairways was found in La Mesa by, the Silver uh, Beavers, they found the, the rainbow stairs very close to my house, FYI. So thanks for making it through this long video and let me share how I ran my scavenger hunt. Uh, it's the first time I've done this in a while and back in the olden days, it was hard to tally up the points. You know, having a spreadsheet sure is key for tallying up the points of teams and with everybody having mobile phones, they can just text you the photos and the clues, send you the question, the answers to the questions on the paper list. Obviously you can't distribute the, um, the, your list of questions, which was four pages. Um, I gave everybody, you know, they took about 15 minutes to study all those questions and make a game plan on how they were gonna get, um, get to most of those destinations. It definitely makes sense to make a game plan. Being organized is the most important part of a scavenger hunt if you're gonna dominate a scavenger hunt and get all the points. So I hope you can make it out to the 30th anniversary event. We're gonna have three days of fun events, several different rides of different levels. Hopefully something is advanced that I might lead early, early in the morning. That'll probably go off road or something nutty to very easy rides around San Diego. But I also plan on incorporating the scavenger hunt. And I'll probably rehash several of these uh, questions. I worked uh, quite, quite a long time to make that four page list and had to go out on like a three hour reconnaissance mission on my scooter to find out if all these things are true. So until next time, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West here in San Diego. Thanks for watching.